to the channel. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Now I'd like to start off by saying thank you everyone for being so patient. I've had a fair amount of time off and I have really enjoyed it, needed it, needed to relax and in between I post a video of one of my uh, hobbies that I've been into. So anyway that's all done, we are back to reviewing watches. So for you guys I have today is a Heimdaller. Now I did give you guys a bit of a preview a bit of a hands-on to this watch already and this was in the black friday sale video that i did and it was talking about the new heimdallah titanium tuna homage now what i have for you guys i have two color versions that they come in uh, they also do have a third black one but i've gone for uh, the more interesting versions here so you guys can check them out so let's go through the specifications price dimensions and then we'll take a much closer look at these two watches from heimdallah now I think you'll agree, looking at the colour versions that I have in front of me, that uh, they've done really well by bringing out these striking and really bold colours. The blue on the right is a bit more subtle, but that is a really nice deep blue. And looking at this grey and orange, this is the one for me out of the colour options available. I love this sort of grey, and then you've got the orange uh, on the bezel, the orange on the strap. I think that looks really good, um, and I think the visuals on it just really stand out. They bring a sense of fun. Uh, to this tuna homage really nice color now in terms of price and uh, being titanium they're not too expensive again heimdallah is giving us really good value for money on um, aliexpress you're looking at around 150 pounds or around 200 dollars and even if you were to check out heimdallah's official website you can also get this for around about the same price around 150 pounds or 200 dollars uh, and I think that is really good value for money considering, you know, we have seen the previous tuna watches um, and, you know, they are built really well. Now, the bonus being that you've got this in full titanium. So that brings me on to specifications. As the case back states, it's stamped boldly and proudly 100% titanium, no adulterations, uh, straight up. I think they on their website, they describe this as a grade three or four. Um, but I don't know what the difference between the grades is, so I won't talk too much about that. Continuing with the specifications, you do have, as you can see, a double-domed AR-coated sapphire crystal, uh, 200 meters of water resistance. This runs the Seiko Epson NH35 movement, which, if you don't know, is a very reliable workhorse movement from Seiko. It does have a beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour, uh, and it comes with a date function, which on this watch is at the 6 o'clock. Now, the watch does come on this FKM tropical style rubber strap, very soft and supple. And I think this strap was a very good choice and it does really match the overall visuals that we see here. On the blue one, no difference with specifications, of course, just a slightly different setup on the dial, um, but looks equally as good. A lot more toned down, of course, than the grey and orange. This also homages Seiko's dawn grey uh, colorway, which you'll see on you know, a lot of the Seikos, the Turtles, the Samurais, etc. So I really do like this. In terms of dimensions, so this watch is a rather large watch. You do have a diameter of 47.2 millimeters. But if we turn the watch this way, you'll notice that the shroud does taper slightly smaller at the top end. So that gives you a diameter of 44 millimeters. You do have a log to log of 44 0.5 millimeters which is from here to here but if you take the circumference of the shroud uh, into consideration the overall log to log on wrist will be around 46 millimeters you have a reasonably good thickness coming in at 14.3 millimeters which i think is is quite good considering you know the overall shape of this watch and the weight of this watch is 90 grams now if you remove the straps the weight drops down to just on the watch case is 70 grams uh, which is, I think, incredible for a tuner. Anyone who's had, whether it's the genuine Seiko tuner or any homages, know that they are weighty watches. And a lot of them do sit at around 150 grams. So this is coming in just under half that. It is kind of trippy for the mind. You expect such a heavy watch, but in hand, it's so light. And on wrist, it wears even lighter and even better. Now let's take a closer look at some of the features that we have in front of us. Now being Heimdallers, I've said it for such a long time, Heimdallers do have some of the best made dials, if not the best for the price range as well. And the dial game is much better than San Martin's. Now looking at the features that you see here, it is mainly applied. Uh, if you look at the logo just under the 12 o'clock, which is the Shredded Shark logo. And above the six, you've got embossed text, shark, titanium automatic with the water resistance rating. 
all the hour markers are indeed applied. Now with this style you can see the frame around the hour markers it is polished black so that matches the dial really well and uh, also the text here that is embossed does stand out and that's done really well of course you can also see that the dial itself is actually textured now i don't know if they've done that to make it look like shark skin but to me i like to call this a tarmac dial because it gives a road like appearance and um, yeah i think it's it's a good texture in all honesty and of course the hour markers do as i said before homage the seiko uh, street series tuner you've got these large rectangular batons and you've got the triangular uh, index at the 12 you do have some extensions coming off the 12 6 um, and the 9 which i think looks okay as well the date window is above the 6 i do prefer it at this location as it still it tries to maintain the symmetry on the dial of course you lose the hour marker for the six but that's fine it's not an issue but you've got this again blacked out polished and brushed date frame which is beveled on the insides so a great amount of detail you'll also notice that the date wheel is also color matched looking at the handset you've got these baton style hands and you've got the second hand with the white accent uh, which helps the, obviously the hands stand out against this watch and I think with all these features combined I think it's a very well thought out dial and very well thought out design from Heimdaller. Now you do also have a color matched chapter ring with black markers. The only thing I'd say in dark lighting or indoor lighting the chapter ring is quite difficult to see um, but you know once you set the time you don't really need to keep an eye on that again. Now the hands you've got a matte black finish which again does suit the overall aesthetic of the dial and i really do like this color option i think it looks good the loom applied i'll show you the loom shot just uh, in a short while and uh, you've got this old radium style loom you know this cream color loom we'll see how good that is on this watch now let's switch over to the blue one i think that has a few subtle differences when we look at the blue option pretty much everything is the same except the text on this one above the six is in that uh, sort of creamy lighter color and you do also have a different color date wheel which is a dark blue which matches uh, the dial perfectly really nice now there is a slightly different finish to the hour markers and the hands now, these hands on here are not matte you can see the brushing present um, and they're a bit yeah they're just brushed steel uh, and then the hour marker frames you can see they're silver and polished and i think that is again a lot of great detail they could have done the same thing as um, the gray one but then for something different and you know again reaffirming what i say about heimdall's dials really really top quality dials and of course the looms awesome on that note let's check out the loom now the thing with this loom is really interesting right it starts off in this sort of pale green um maybe it's c1 or c3 i'm not too sure the specifications aren't available on the website uh you can see that loomed pip at 12 o'clock now the loom i'm showing you it has not had any uv lamp exposure so this is just from the led lights in the room and you'll agree that it is to a very good standard there's no patchiness all the hour markers light up and um, the hands are lit up a while as well and it isn't that dull we have seen this loom normally on watches does come in quite dull so i'm really pleased how that looks just without you know any focused uv lights but when i do put the torch on the loom reacts in a really interesting way well you can see it's gone to a yellow color right i've not seen this loom before um and it's the first time looking at it but look how bright that is first and foremost and when it does dull out i'll record this over i believe five minutes um you can see it goes to a really nice you know halogen sort of yellow uh which is again really well done very bright um and the longevity on it is pretty decent and then after a while it does kind of go back to this pale green color so I think that's really good uh, and re again reaffirming Heimdall's dial games is brilliant and the fact that you've got a tool watch with amazing loom at that price point is a massive thumbs up for me. Now let's have a closer look at the bezel and let's start off with the bezel insert. Now on this grey and orange variant the bezel insert is indeed aluminium. You do have silver printed markers and you've got that grey and the orange accent on there and it does have a very matte finish. Um, in terms of the pip you do have a really nicely finished pip you do have a metal polished frame around it it isn't protruding uh too much and it isn't sharp usually heimdall do sometimes use a pip just sticks out a bit too much now in terms of the actual bezel 
now in terms of the actual bezel construction you can see it is finished really well really nice cuts decent engraving on there good grip as well but the thing with tuners i find the shroud does always get in the way when you do check the rotation so let's have a look at this one it is of course 120 clicks Let's check the alignment. And it lines up pretty much bang on. Now, with regards to titanium, it is a different material. So the bezel rotation on titanium is always slightly different. I think the best rotation that I've felt uh, on a titanium watch would be the Steinhardt that I've had. Um, but with regards to this, I think it's pretty much really good. Uh, I know the Seamaster homage that they did, that was a bit more iffy. Uh, some of those bezels weren't the best. However, on this one, it, there's no jamming. Uh, it is slightly tougher. It is quite tactile. Uh, you do feel all the clicks and it does require a bit of force. Uh, but I think that's down to more the material. Enough. Let's check for consistency across the blue one. Let's get a good grip. As I said, it is quite difficult to grip it with a shroud. Slightly different sound, but again, as I mentioned with the titanium, uh, being that material it is, um, it, it, yeah, they're, they're not always consistent. They do sound a bit funny, uh, but the good thing is it isn't getting stuck. Uh, it still is working slightly harder than I would like, but even the original Seiko tuners that I have, um, they're not the easiest uh, to turn. Now, in terms of the bezel insert on this blue one, you do have a ceramic one. As you can see, it is in blue and you've got the white markers. Uh, the pip on this one is slightly different. The frame around the pip is slightly narrower. Okay, it still is quite slim, but I prefer the pip on this aluminium bezel insert. I think it's finished quite a bit better. I'll show you guys a picture, a bit of a closer between the two. Um, so the decision ultimately is yours. Let's turn our attention to the actual watch case. And you know, with titanium, you know, you don't have different kinds of finishing. You've got this one style of finishing all day around on top of the shroud and all the way around. The screws also are titanium. Um, if you do want to remove the shroud, uh, you do need to use the right hex key. Otherwise you'll end up ending this off and damaging the screws. You also have drill lugs, which is very handy to have. Turning the watch around, you do have a titanium case back. You've got the Heimdallah logo and you've got this uh, engraved embossed uh, text which details the specifications it is a screw down case back and overall i think it is a well-made case as i mentioned in the start of the video it's no different to the other tuners just a different material um with regards to function let's have a look at the crown really good grip on this crown and again it is also made out of titanium clicks in perfectly and it screws down over the thread very nicely as well let's just double check on this one so very decent crown action and that's the main thing that you want to look at when you are looking at titanium watches you want to see the functionality the bezels in these i'd say you know yeah you will have some inconsistency they're not going to be as smooth and free flowing as you like now, the straps that are available on this watch, they are these uh, tropical FKM style straps, as I mentioned earlier. Very comfortable, and I think uh, they really suit these watches. Of course, you know, these are strap monsters. You can put whatever you like on these cases, but because this is titanium, it might limit you to the type of bracelet you put on there because the stainless steel bracelet just wouldn't match. Um, so you'll be down to different types of rubber straps and, of course, any leather straps that you want to try as well. Now, the one thing they have uh, changed on this FKM rubber strap, and I really do like it, is the actual buckle. So the buckle has been designed by Heimdallah. You do have the shark logo. It is fully brushed. And I believe this is also titanium, but don't quote me on that. But just have a look at it. Very broad. Really well done. And, you know, even though it's not a major thing, it's not something that I look at, but it's something that I definitely notice when I see a strap with a very decent buckle. So that's done really well and it's a nice touch to finish the watch off. So let's get this watch on wrist. Let's see how it looks overall. Now on wrist for today, I'm wearing my Proxima Bronze Samurai. 
homage um yeah just put this on after such a long time and i think it is such a cool looking watch so let's get the tuners on wrist so here we have the heimdalla titanium street tuner homage on my six and a half inch wrist as i stated with seiko watches in general many times before um that you know they wear really well on smaller wrists so don't ever be hindered by the fact you know if you think a watch is going to be too big things like the sumo things like the mm300 and of course these tuners so these principles also apply to the homages because they are homage quite close to the dimensions of the reset originals and you know as i said about wearability as well that 90 gram weight including the strap uh, is really nicely proportioned on your wrist it is uh, spread out so that looks really good and the colors used on this version are very eye-catching i love the gray and the orange and the bonus of having a titanium case construction is that it gives it this color as well this sort of gunmetal gray color um, and i like just the, the full package like i said with this one stands out a lot you know it's something fun to wear something quite out there uh, so if you are into your colorful watches this would be the perfect one for you plus it's got the functionality it is a tool watch and just really really good dial features you know they've done so many good things with this watch um and it definitely grew on me the more i wore it now let's try the blue now the blue one is a much toned down version uh i think a bit more of a grown-up version let's just say now visually they wear quite differently um i think the color has a big impact on on the overall look uh if i hope i'm making sense when i say that so this one's a much toned down version um you could wear this just on an everyday basis this color here or the black one would be a bit of a blender daily wearer whereas you know when you wear this orange and gray it's definitely going to stand out it's definitely a personality piece so very comfortable overall very good watch let's give you guys a quick summary what are the best things that i like about this as i spoke about the dial uh, i love the dial uh, the smaller details that they've done the build quality the attention detail date frame at six you know all these little things the loom that's been applied the hour markers the subtle difference between the two now, what i don't like too much the only thing that i do have a gripe with i must say is that bezel now that is down again to the build material so if you purchase these models you know brace yourself for an inconsistency you might get a bezel that isn't to your liking it doesn't move as freely as you want it to but you know as i've seen it in my experience anyway it is a side effect of the material you're using plus the mechanism they used um, to enable the rotation but other than that overall i think it's a very decent package i think it's great value for money as well and you know such an iconic piece it's been updated with a street series um, dial aesthetics and you've got titanium so overall very good watch I do give it a thumbs up uh, if you guys are interested in purchasing this please check out the links below in the description as i said the price is the same from the heimdall official website and also from aliexpress so thank you guys for watching and i will see you very soon with another video